a good time. You know, I told uh, the guys over there when we talked about this, you know, I've been out of the Chattanooga bar scene for so many years. I don't know if I can draw a crowd or not, but it looks like we're going to have a good time. Yeah, I think that, uh, so far we've uh, got about 300 coming tomorrow night. And uh, how long do you think you might play? Oh, there's no telling. <laughs> if I'm having a good time, I might make the most of it. Make up for those years I haven't been playing out there. Oh, well, there you go. You might better be careful there. You might get yourself into something. <laughs> yeah, could be. Well, we look forward to the show. Now, you guys, uh, I was asking you this before we came on the air. Uh, I always refer to you guys as the as the hometown boys. And, and by me saying that, that is a true statement. You guys are. Uh, yeah, I was born and raised here in the Chattanooga area. Went to Hickson High School. Um, uh, we still live out around Cleveland, the Hawaii area. Yeah. And uh, started out, uh, my first paying gig was at uh, the Ranch House Restaurant and Lounge at the foot of Lookout Mountain in <laughs> July of 76. Wow. So yeah, it's been a, been a while, 34, what, 34 years? Oh, doing this. Now, now I, uh, I read that you guys uh, in the early days played the Marietta, Georgia area a lot. Is that well, we toured a lot all over the, uh, all over the country. You know, I started, uh, started the band in 81 and uh, playing here around Chattanooga. And then in 83, we started kind of the old uh, theory of make the circle bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, we get in Alabama, Georgia, and North Carolina and spread out a little bit. Uh, one of the places that was uh, really good for us was down in Atlanta, Marietta area, a big club called Miss Kitties. Mm -hmm. uh, now the rotation of, of house bands there before any of us had record deals was us, Travis Tritt, Diamond Rio, Little Texas, and John Barry. Wow. So, you know, and this is where any of us were known nationally. Wow. And as it was a really happening club. And that's where we were when we got signed. Signed with Atlantic Records. With Atlantic, yes. And when were you signed? Uh, actually, on my 35th birthday, I wow. signed my record deal, which is being heard of nowadays. You know, if you, uh, if you don't have a record deal now, by the time you're 30, I guess, you know, you're not going to happen. But, um, uh, yeah, it was my 31st or 35th birthday. You know, that's a good thing about country music is that country music fans don't discriminate against uh, an artist because of their age. That's true. You know, we, uh, we still play a lot of college crowds. Uh, we were up outside Virginia Tech, um, I guess, two weeks ago, a, a show, a big club we play up there every year, and probably uh, 80, 85 percent of the club was 25 or under, and they were singing, uh, you know, every song that I did. So oh. it's amazing, yeah. Oh, that's got to make you feel good. Yeah, it's fun. How does it, it feel when you're on stage and you hear people singing the words that are there? Oh, it's young? great. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Uh, <laughs> it makes you feel old sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Something you actually the wrote. Ones, the ones that I hate is when you when you uh, do a show with one of these new young artists and they say, man, I was a big Confederate Railroad fan when I was a little kid and, and I used to sneak behind the club because I wasn't old enough to get in and, you know. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. I want to play a, a track off the first album. Sure. You guys, uh, that first album, I think you released, what, like seven singles off that thing? We had six chart records off that one album, yeah. And, uh, Did you leave anything? Uh, was there uh, there anything was still a couple album? I wish we could have <laughs> put out, you know. the uh, uh, it, it was a fun album. Um, Robert Orman, the big music critic in Nashville, listed that as the album to have of that year. So I thought that was pretty cool. There you go. Well, uh, Which one are you going to play? I want to play Queen of Memphis. Is there a story behind it? Dave Gibson of the Gibson Miller Band was one of the co-writers on this song, along with Bernie them. Nelson. and um, They were good. They were, and, and had uh, a, a lot of big hits for us. I'm sorry, no, Bernie wasn't on this, and he was on Cadillac. Kind. Dave Gibbs and Kathy Leuven wrote this song, well, Queen of Memphis. And when they wrote it, we really liked the, the chorus and the melody, but I wasn't crazy about the, uh, the verses. Okay. And uh, so they went back in and did a rewrite on it, but I was so sure I had such confidence in Kathy and Dave that we went ahead and recorded the song without them even having written the verses yet. Wow. And then I went back in went and, 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 and the verses. did the verses, yeah. Uh, but this was a, a number one record for us. Uh, the uh, video for this, remember we had Jerry Glanville, coach of the Falcons, Wow. back in the day. He was there with us on this video. Well, let's check uh, it number out. Number one record for us. It's from the debut album, the self-titled album, Confederate Railroad. It's Queen of Memphis. Danny Shirley's in the studio. We'll talk to him more here in a second. 107.9. Chattanooga's Country Station, 107.9. The Duke, the Queen of Memphis, Confederate Railroad there. And they are going to be playing the lower level tomorrow night. Danny Shirley is in the studio with us. And uh, Danny, you were telling me, uh, the, is the song about a woman or is it about a boat? It's open for interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, um, I tell you that uh, that song and the other songs on that album. I mean, it, there's not a bad track on the on the album. It, it was a fun record. Where was that recorded at? Uh, we did that in Nashville. I did all those albums in Nashville. Um, all the Confederate Railroad albums. Barry Beckett, our producer, just a, a legend in, in music. Not just country music, but all kinds of music. And uh, it was just a, a, a honor, one of my favorite memories ever, to make that record.
What are you doing these days? Uh, well, we're still on the road quite a bit. Uh, we still do about 100 shows a year. Uh, uh, other than that, I stay home with kids and clean the house. Yeah. That's good. Like Mr. Mom. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you could write us a while. No, there's no, there's one about that. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. well, I tell you, tomorrow night, we're really looking forward to the show. This next tune is also from the first album, and it's Jesus and Mama. Anything about that you could share? Uh, that was uh, our first number one record. Uh, actually, the uh, I did the demo on that song for the uh, for the songwriters, and uh, I just kind of filed that in the back of my head. You know, if when I get a record deal, I want to try to remember to do this song. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, it wanted to become our very first number one record. And also got us nominated for a couple of awards to Christian Music Awards, which was a big honor. Now you guys got awarded uh, a Vocal Group of the Year, ACMs? Uh, we got the new vocal group in 93 at the ACMs. Yeah. Um, uh, nominated for several CMA Awards, uh, Grammy Award. Uh, um, That's got to be some, uh, Nominations over in Europe, of all things. Wow. Yeah. Where have you played overseas? Well, we've played uh, England, Ireland, uh, Germany, Switzerland, France. Uh, we were actually the first American country music group to tour Brazil years wow. ago. That was a lot of fun. So you've got a big following overseas, too? Uh, yeah, it's done pretty good, yeah. Do you get a lot of, uh, do you get any feedback from anybody from overseas on the website? or? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how to use a computer. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, you're better off. But, uh, well, I kind of felt that way, you know, but my wife's kind of pushed me into the 21st century, so I, she said the other day she set me up an email account. I said, "Oh man, your first email That's just account. another way for people to get in touch with me. <laughs> not, not that many people. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Can't get away. You can't get away. All right. Well, we'll play a track here off the uh, off the first. Uh, uh, this is the first album, right? Yes. Jesus and Mama's on the first album. Jesus and Mama. It's Confederate Railroad. Find out more about the Duke. Website, 1079 the Duke dot com, or just show up at the door tomorrow night uh, until it uh, sells out. So we'll be taking people at the door. Danny, now uh, uh, the band." Um, you, uh, how many original members you still got? Well, Mark, the drummer, has been with me. Mark Dufresne, he uh, he lives here in Chattanooga. He's been with me since 1981. Mm -hmm. uh, Wayne Seacrest on bass uh, lives in Atlanta. He's been with me since '87. Okay. Um, you got Cody McCarver. With Cody's you with us. Yeah, he's from Dunlap. He'll be there with us. And of course, Cody's got uh, some great things happening in his own career. Uh, he's uh, got the number one video in the nation on CMT Pure this week. Uh, with a song I wrote off wow. the Unleashed album, White Trash with Money. That's impressive. Uh, he's three years in a row been named the uh, Independent Country Music Artist of the Year at the radio seminar in Nashville. And he's going to be there three tomorrow night, too. We're going to have to let him do a part of the show. Yeah. Got to get a two for one there. Uh, there you go. And uh, the newest member, uh, Rusty Hendricks uh, from uh, Birmingham. And he's been with us only a couple of years, but we, Rusty and I go back to, uh, uh, gosh, 83 when we first started traveling. That on the road. Sounds so familiar. Well, he worked with um, Sammy Kershaw for about the past nine years, okay. and uh, before that, worked for uh, Mark Wills. All right. And uh, so Rusty's with us now, and of course, uh, on the, uh, a little sad news, we lost our steel player Gates last summer. I heard that. Uh, last uh, Gates has been sick for a couple of years, and they couldn't really find out, re uh, figure out what it was wrong with him. And uh, in June, uh, they realized he had pancreatic cancer. And we lost him about six weeks later. Oh, I'm sorry. So he won't that. be with us first time. He won't be with us here at Governor's. But um, uh, we're looking forward to it. Should be a lot of fun. Well, it's going to be a good time. Now, show time is what? 9.30? I don't o'clock. know. You know, I'll, I'll probably get there, you know, 9.30 or so, be ready to go on stage. If, if uh, people are still coming in, we might hold off to 10. Okay. Uh, I, I thought, uh, last I heard, we were planning on going on stage around 10 o'clock. Okay. 10 o'clock. And uh, if I'm having a good time, we might stay there until way past midnight. All right. We'll see what happens. Well, that's going to be a good time. The lower level tomorrow night, Confederate Railroad is going to be there. Danny, thanks for coming by today. Oh, it's my pleasure. I appreciate you, you taking time out of your day to come by here and, and spend some time with us on the radio. My pleasure.